Well, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Well. We're looking at life after lockdown and the Beatitudes. This week it's mercy. Blessed ever merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. These are the sayings and teaching of Jesus to the people. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Well, what does blessed mean? Blessed could be described as divine satisfaction that comes from right relationship with God. To me, that ultimately sounds like a real deep peace, contentment. Mercy, well, mercy is not receiving what we do deserve. Mercy is freedom. Mercy is forgiveness. Mercy is the getting alongside. It's in the giving of something that we could never give back. God's character is mercy. It is who he is. He gives mercy. The whole of the Bible is a story of his mercy, his reconnection with humanity, his forgiveness, his just again giving of himself. And we are called to do likewise. And there's a cycle, isn't it? Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So what does that mean to us right now as we begin to kind of step back out into kind of a more normal life again? You know, here we are, we're one week to go before the next lifting of restrictions if the roadmap goes to plan. You know, we know in this whole season that social division has only increased the poor have got poorer and that wouldn't be a surprise to any of us. You know, we know in so many places that if you don't work, you don't eat. We know that often in places where there's kind of unstableness in society, when the cost of food shoots up, as the cost of food shoots up, then the poor get even poorer and society becomes more corrupt and more unlawful as people have to find ways of getting food and the poor just become even more poorer. What do they do? Well, you know, as we talk about this, it, it can feel quite depressing and, and guilt-ridden. And it's a time when actually we know we need to go back out and recreate, connect with life, to see our friends, to celebrate, to do the things that bring us joy and happiness. But at the same time, how do we connect and how do we love well? What does love look like? We know we can't fix the problems. We know we can't necessarily administer justice, but what we can do is be merciful. How do we do that? I love this quote from Mother Teresa. At the moment of death, we will not be judged according to the number of good deeds we have done or by the diplomas we received in our lifetime. We will be judged according to the love we have put into our work. It's not the number of good deeds, but it's about love. We know that the whole of the Bible is this theme. You know, Micah talks about to love just, to act justly, to act justly, to love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Isaiah talks about the true fast, you know, not being about kind of physical fasting or doing kind of physical rituals and rules, but about loving the poor, about being just, about feeding the hungry. And then Jesus, Jesus teaches about what you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. When you clothe the naked, feed the hungry and visit the prisoner, the least of these. You know, we know we can't necessarily go out there and fix the world and know what to do in all these circumstances. But what we can do is love the people in front of us. And it's a heart attitude. Hebrews talks about the word of God is alive and active. This is Hebrews 4 verse 12. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of a heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything that is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him, we must give account. He sees everything. It's about our heart attitude. How can we give mercy if we've not received it? 
you know, reading verses like that can in one sense be quite harrowing. We, we want to hide, but we can't. We can never do things well enough. That's why we receive God's mercy. And if we can sit in his mercy and his love and know that we are fully loved, we are fully made whole in his sight in his love and we can go out and as we receive that mercy we can give his mercy we can give it to love that person in front of us but maybe we don't feel deserves it but they're the person that needs clothing that needs loving that needs time that needs attention that needs hearing and we can do that and as we do that then we're loving jesus and you know, as we look at what's in front of us, and maybe that's in front of us of how we can help the world. How do we do that in an age where even on last week on the news, they reported about the budgets being cut. And so, you know, so much of a percentage of money that would have gone into water and sanitation across the world, you know, the basic things of life, fresh, clean water being cut. Well, if that is cut from a funding point of view, where does the short come from? Well, maybe that's where we get to rise up. And maybe, I'm just giving one example of water. There's so many things and so many needs around us. And I know we can't fund all of it and do everything, but we can do the thing in front of us. And we can listen and we can pray and we can have our eyes open. And so at the time where we are going to go out and we're going to celebrate and enjoy this season of what we can do, let's have our eyes open of what Holy Spirit wants to do in this season too, in loving the people around us. And so we go out, let's go out mercifully, let's go out receiving his love. He sees us, he sees us, it's not about clocking up the good deeds, but it's about receiving his mercy so we can show mercy. Bless you today.